it's typically harder. Um, the second exam, so the question was, is the second exam the same difficulty or more difficulty than the first? I would say the second exam is about the same. Um, I would say the one challenging aspect of Unit 2 is the polyatomic ions. So the polyatomic ions are a lot more difficult than your pink and yellow flashcards, where you had to you know, memorize the symbols from the periodic table. So um, you have polyatomic ions to memorize, and they're not an easy thing. Um, let me see. Has, does it, so for those of you who started on your polyatomic ions, um, can you name some of the polyatomic ions? Hydroxide. So OH negative hydroxide ion. Sulfite. Sulfite. SO3 negative 2. SO3 negative 2. Sulfite ion. All right, what else? Nitrite ion. Nitrite, which is NO negative 2. Is that the just. Oh, wait, I don't know. I knew the negative, but. Ah, yes, yeah, so it's, <laughs> it's NO subscript 2 minus 1. So this is nitrite ion. Um, what else? Nitrate. Nitrate, NO3 negative. Nitrate ion. Now notice that I'm not just writing hydroxide or nitrite or nitrate. I'm writing out the word ion because that indicates that there's a charge. So, and we'll learn about that more too. What other polyatomic ions do we have? What's that? Sulfate? Yes, so SO4 minus 2. Sulfate ion. Dichromate. Dichromate. Mm hmm. Chromium at 2, oxygen 7, 2 minus. Now, very good. It's minus 2, 2 minus. I'm not picky about this. Um, some chemistry courses that you come across. They say, it's got to be 2 minus. It can't be minus 2. We'll learn about what the minus 2 and 2 minus means um, coming up, but I'm not picky. Just as long as you have the subscripts and the superscripts and the elements correct, that's what I'm looking for with these polyatomic ions. All right, what else do we have? Ammonium. 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 NH4 plus ammonium. And you can write out the one, or you can just plus or minus. So, all right, what else do we have? Acetate. Acetate. C2H3O2 minus. Good. Acetate ion. Phosphate. Phosphate. CO4 minus 3 phosphate ion. <coughs> Anything else? Bicarbonate. Bicarbonate. Um, HCO3. What's the charge on bicarbonate? Minus, minus 1. While we're on bicarbonate, what carbonate? So CO3 minus 2. And I heard oxalate over here. Mm -hmm. And what was the other one? Uh, cyanide. Cyanide. So CO2, O4 minus 2. Oxalate, ion, and then cyanide. <coughs> Did I miss any? Can I get them all? Um, so, probably in me writing these down, you realize that these are a lot more than those pink and yellow flashcards. Um, 
I'm not a flashcard person. I never have been, so I couldn't learn these with flashcards. The way I learned these was I would write out <coughs> the names, and then I would have to provide the formulas. And um, I really would make, you know, now it's a lot easier to print things off. You could, you know, make a quiz for yourself like that and print it off about 20 times and see, you know, just keep doing it every day until you get them all correct. You might trick yourself into thinking that you know all the polyatomic ions when you just look at the flashcards and you're like, oh yeah, I know, I would have gotten that. But when you actually have to put yourself in a test taking scenario where you don't have any notes, you don't have anything to look on, um, it might help you. <coughs> uh, but um, students who do not memorize the polyatomic ions on Unit 2 cannot do better than 60% on the exam. So, you know, that just shows you how much we use the polyatomic ions. But if you know the polyatomic ions, you'll be fine. You'll be able to name these ionic and covalent compounds and do that. On the quiz, you'll give both. On the quiz, yes. Um, options. So, it'd be... so, like you said, so, like, maybe make our own, like, folk quizzes where mm -hmm. one quiz is all of the all of the molecules kind of written out, mm -hmm. and then we have to fill in the name, and then make one where we have the name, and we have to write the molecule. Right. Okay. So I just really keep quizzing yourself, because uh, I'm always amazed at how you can trick yourself into thinking you know the material when you're you're not. You're just kind of oh, I kind of know that. I'll get it. I'll get it. But if you force yourself um, to kind of take quizzes from time to time, that makes it a lot easier. And I, I didn't learn that taking a quiz until I was in organic chemistry because you have, there's a lot of repetition in organic chemistry and you need to know the reactions. And so I met up with a classmate and the way he would study was he would make quizzes. He would just photocopy <coughs> over and over and it was so helpful. So I've had lots of students have success with studying this way, especially for the polyatomic ions. Okay. Any other questions about the polyatomic ions? Um, so in unit two, um, we're going to talk about the electron dot symbol, um, and we touched on these in unit one, actually. So if you remember the electron configurations, um, where you have the electrons parked in certain shells, let's do, um, that for lithium. What's the electron configuration for lithium? 2, two 1. All right, what about sodium? Two, eight, one. <coughs> two, eight, one. So two, eight, eight, one for potassium. And then fluorine. Two, seven, chlorine. Two, eight, seven. Now bromine, technically we didn't ask you to do bromine because bromine is past atomic number 20. So if you look at bromine, you're like, what is she asking? That's, that's fine. It, the, it's, the configuration for bromine is 2, 8, 8, 7. So, and if that it doesn't make sense to you, don't worry about it because we will never have um, a question about the electron configuration above atomic number 20. Okay. So what group do lithium, sodium, and potassium belong to? Alkali metals? Good. What about fluorine, chlorine, and bromine? Halogens, good. So these groups, they're grouped accordingly because they have the same number of valence electrons. So you have one valence electron in your alkali metals. You have seven valence electrons in your <coughs> halogens. 
So the valence electrons are the outermost electrons um, of an atom. Valence electrons are very important in predicting the behavior of atoms. And so because they're so important, a way of drawing pictures of them has been developed. Um, so very quickly you can understand why they behave the way they do. <coughs> so remember that lithium, sodium, and potassium, they all belong in group one, or the alkali metals, they have one valence electron. So the electron dot symbol or dot structure um, is just going to have the name or the abbreviation, the um, element symbol, with one dot beside it. Now, there's no rule saying that you need to have the dot on the left side or the top or the bottom or the right. Anywhere you can have your dot. So that just tells you that there's one valence electron. So then fluorine, chlorine, and bromine, how many valence electrons and how many dots would they have? Seven. Seven. Now with seven, you're going to find, <coughs> you'll do two on three sides and one on one side. So your unpaired one doesn't always have to be on the right. It could be on the left, or it could be on the top or the bottom. So on the next page, I want you to write the electron dot structures for neon and argon. So how many valence electrons are in neon and argon? Eight. So the um, electronic configuration for neon, which is, I didn't ask you for, is two, eight. And argon is two, eight, eight. So the number of valence electrons in each of them is eight. So the electron dot structure for neon would just have paired electrons on every side of neon. Same thing with argon. <coughs> so what group do neon and argon belong in? Noble gases. Good. What is notable about noble gas behavior? Yes, they're stable and non reactive. Um, they are very content. They have eight electrons. So noble gases are stable and non-reactive because they have eight electrons. So that brings us to the octet rule. Um, 
and it has to do with eight. Eight is great. So if you remember from Sesame Street, um, you can learn a lot from that. Uh, the octet rule states that representative elements will gain, lose, or share electrons in order to obtain a filled valence shell. Representative elements will gain, lose, or share electrons in order to obtain a filled valence shell. So if you can remember, eight is great. That will get you far in unit two. There are a few exceptions. Um, hydrogen and helium, you can think of them as minimalists. They're happy with two electrons. They don't need the whole eight. And if you think about it, in the first shell, you can only have two electrons. So they are happy with two electrons. <coughs> um, the other exception that we kind of come across is boron. It's also a minimalist. It's happy with six a lot of the times. So um, Aside from those exceptions, um, the representative elements, what's another name for representative elements? The main group. So, uh, main group. So when an atom loses or gains electrons to get to eight, it's no longer neutral. You think about when you have an atom that has balanced protons and electrons, it's neutral because whatever number of protons you have, whatever number of electrons you have, they balance each other out. If you lose or gain electrons, you're no longer in that balanced state. So we have ions, aside from the car that you might hear of, the, an ion is, in chemistry is a charged species. Um, and within ions, you can have a <coughs> positive ion or a negative ion. So a cation is a positively charged ion. And then an anion is a negatively charged ion. So you can say ion for anything that's charged. You can be more specific when you say cation or anion. The way I always remembered this, um, in cation you have the T, which is the plus, so if you just think of that, kind of highlighting that in your mind, so you keep the positive straight and the negative. <coughs> so I want you to take a few minutes here to draw the electron dot structures for sodium, magnesium, aluminum, nitrogen, oxygen, bromine, and neon. So for sodium, what did you get? One. Magnesium? One thing about these electron dot structures that I didn't mention earlier, leave the electrons unpaired as long as possible. 
So for magnesium, you have the choice of pairing them up because they're two or having them unpaired. Have them unpaired. So aluminum, how many valence electrons in aluminum? Three. In nitrogen, how many? Five. So leave them unpaired as long as possible and then pair them up. So in nitrogen, you're going to have two, or a set that are paired and then three unpaired. Oxygen, six. So two paired, two unpaired. Bromine, how many? <coughs> Seven. And then neon. Yes. Um, I think when I learned this many, many years back in high school, that doesn't it go where it trends, at least for the for the main group, where it is all of um, all of group one is one. All of group two is two, and then all of group is a is it now in the three is is three and then four five six seven eight. Yes, okay. that is a good point. Um, so, I can do that, so, yeah. so um, what Jay was pointing out is that all of group one has one valence electron. All of group two has two valence electrons. All of group three three valence electrons. Four, four valence electrons, and all the way up to eight, so five, six, seven, eight. So that works for all the main group elements, and that is very useful to know for unit two. You will revisit this again and again in unit two. So, you know, thank <coughs> you for mentioning that. Um, it, it will become, you know, oh, that's group two, has two valence electrons, and, and you're going to get very familiar with the periodic table in unit two because you will use it often and almost to the point where you know what well, calcium group two it has a plus two charge when it becomes an ion that type of thing so thank you for pointing that out um, now these questions that I have which of the above atoms would gain electrons to achieve an octet remember that eight is great so if you are pretty close to an octet, it's going to be quicker for you to just gain one or two electrons as opposed to gaining seven or eight electrons. Um, so in the example above, neon, would neon gain any electrons? No. He's happy. He's just going to be happy with his eight electrons. He's not going to react. He's very stable. Uh, bromine. Yeah, bromine needs to gain one. So bromine's going to gain one. Who else will gain? Nitrogen and oxygen. So nitrogen is going to gain three. So bromine, I'll put an X for the ones that are gained. It will just be a one. Nitrogen will have to gain one, two, three. So nitrogen would gain three. Oxygen <coughs> would gain two. So it's easier to see. So the atoms that would lose electrons to achieve an octet, it's going to be a lot quicker to get an octet if they just lose electrons. <coughs> would be sodium. Now, um, 
sodium. <coughs> Remember the con electron configuration of sodium is 2, 8, 1. So if sodium loses that one electron, it's going to have an octet. So at first glance, it seems like, wait, wait a second, why is that? Now, according to my electron dot diagram, I, I won't have any electrons, but sodium will have an octet. It just goes up to the next shell. Um, so if sodium loses that one, so it becomes stable. Same thing with magnesium. Remember the configuration for magnesium is 2, 8, 2. So if magnesium loses 2, it will have an octet. Aluminum is another one. 2, 8, if it loses <coughs> three, it will achieve an octet. Yes? Sorry, I, I, I swear it kind of relates to it, but burning question with sodium. So, hence, in the same, this is why the table salt, you have a balance, so it's not going to be that good in your mm -hmm. mind. The, like, the physiological side that we have to learn about like, sodium transport and everything else, and is that, is that like, the, is that kind of like pure NA plus, or is that? Well, and, and it has an anion to balance it, so chlor chloride is the negative mm -hmm. one. But you, there is a the <coughs> transport that works out for that. Okay. So, the charge that it has is very important in the transport. Good question. Um, now, I'm going to go another step. If sodium loses one, yes? I think I was going to ask about where you're going. Yeah. So okay. Thank you. That, so if sodium loses one, is it going to be neutral anymore? No, it's not going to be. So if it loses, and remember, we're talking about electrons. <coughs> Gain three electrons, gain two electrons, gain one electron, loses two electrons, loses three electrons. So if sodium loses one electron, it's no longer going to have this proton-electron balance. It's going to have, if it loses one electron, it's going to have one more proton. So because it has one more proton, it's going to be in a plus. Okay? Magnesium loses two electrons. So is it going to be neutral anymore? Mg plus two. Aluminum loses three. So it's going to be Al plus. No, that's the page number. Yeah, plus twenty-two. Oh, it's the page number. I'm sorry. How did you get plus 22? No. Thank you for pointing that out. Now, the atoms that would gain electrons, so all of these will form cations because they lose electrons. The examples above, because they're gaining electrons, they're gaining more negative, they're going to be anions. So, we have nitrogen gaining three electrons. So, it's no longer going to be neutral. It's going to be, I wish I left more space here. Sorry about this. It's going to be N minus three. Oxygen, when it gains two electrons, what will its charge be? and you could write it 2 minus or minus 2. Bromine 
when it gains one, it's going to be minus one. And there is a way to distinguish these ions from the neutral atoms. And we'll learn about the nomenclature for that. Um, but, you know, like, I'll, I'll give you a preview. This is nitride ion. This is oxide ion. This is bromide ion, sodium ion, magnesium ion, aluminum ion. Okay? So, on the next page, um, I have a question. <coughs> Which atoms neither gain or um, lose electrons? Um, we answered that early on. That was neon, because it has eight. So on your periodic table, we have you to. Label your periodic table with charges that atoms in each group form. <coughs> uh, so group one, remember sodium was in group one, and it formed a plus one. Okay, so group one is going to be plus one. Group two is going to be plus two. Now, transition metals vary. There are transitions. It could be a plus two, it could be a plus four. It depends on the metal. <coughs> so, um, I'll zoom in on one. And we'll talk about this more coming up. If you look at these little numbers above, I'm looking at iron. Um, if you look at iron right there, those little numbers are the numbers, um, the possible charges that iron can form when it forms ions, cations. So it could be iron plus two, it could be iron plus three, or it could be iron plus six. Those are what's unique about transition metals. Yes. Will they always be a positive charge? Yes. So, all those numbers cations? Um, for the metals. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, we do not see a plus six in on iron, you can cross it off. I point this out because um, when we get to the older nomenclature, we use us and ick, so you'll see ferrous, which is plus two, and you'll see ferric, which is plus three. If you have the periodic table that has six written on it, you're like, well, what's plus six? You don't come across <coughs> plus six iron in this course. It exists, but we don't cover it. Um, so for the metals, the transition metals, this is the only time that you look at these little numbers. When you're in your main groups, just pay attention to the main group charges. So the ones that we're writing, plus one, plus two, those apply to the main group. The transition metals are special, and that you look at the numbers written directly above the abbreviation. So um, group three is plus Three. Group four. Um, not for transition metals. Okay. So if we will do electron dot symbols for um, elements one through twenty. Okay. So we, don't, we don't get into the craziness. Of, right. Okay. Um. Now, when we get to group four, group four is, um, they share electrons. They don't participate in ionic bonding. Uh, so instead of giving away electrons or gaining electrons, they would just rather share. So in terms of charges, we don't see charges formed in that group. Now, if you look, 
There are still numbers written above, like carbon, plus, plus or minus 4 and 2. Do not look at those numbers for anything but the transition metals, okay? Only look at the charges that you have written on the main group. And we'll have a lot of practice opportunities on this. But sometimes students are like, ah, has all these different <coughs> choices. Now, group five. Remember our example? Nitrogen had a negative three charge. So now we're going from losing electrons to gaining electrons. And if you think about this, you can visually look, okay, well, in order for nitrogen to get to a neon configuration, it's going to have to gain one, two, three electrons. That's why it has a negative three charge in that group five. Um, group six, it's going to need to gain one, two electrons to get to the noble gas configuration. You get that octet, so that's negative two. Group seven, the halogens just need to gain one electron. So we have a negative one charge. Questions on that? <coughs> 